I will my woman for years and never will really accomplish anything. It's utter nonsense to think those two would ever be conniving with one another. Oh dear, this is most troubling. But surely the waxwork the man stole has nothing to do with the coroner, is it? I have had my own problems with members of the police. I do not trust them much. I've no rigorous proof that this waxwork was ever inside the birdcage. It's conjecture. Accusing someone without right evidences is not a proper job, you see. I won't have it. Uh, somewhat unsurprisingly, it seems the introduction of this waxwork model to the proceedings has polarized opinion. Given that its face is obscured and its build in no way resembles that of the victim. I can only applaud my learned friend's temerity at suggesting it was Mr. Esmond's body double. <laughs> yes, the applause is deafening, and yes, I know it seems extraordinary. But that's the point. That's why I have a strong feeling it's actually a greater clue than anyone yet realizes. What are you thinking, Mr. Naruto? I can't explain wh why at the moment. But I feel as though there's a specific reason why it was used. Why it had to be this model. Really? A reason why nothing else would do, you mean? Yes, and I'm convinced it's something far more significant than whether or not the model looked like the victim. Well, if that's the case... We must prevent the trial from ending prematurely at all costs. Yes, agreed. I have to find a way out of this. If you are ready, Council, you may proceed. Yes, my lord. You knew her? Really? Hold it! <laughs> the order of things seems to have changed around here for some reason. I'm a copper lad, and the copper's just crash to burn the rules sometimes from each must. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Where do I start? I've been working in the yard for 40 odd years. That's even more than I thought. We've only had a metropolitan police service in town for 70 years, you know. Of course, time have changed. The public didn't trust coppers back when I started. It was rough. We had to fight crime, and we had to fight to win the public's trust as well, and we would win. Win we did. Forensic Giant was in its infancy too, even more than it is now, and she spearheaded the revolution. Dr. Scythe, you mean? That's right, about 10 years ago now it was, when I was still a youngish Bobby on the beat. That's when she started making a name for herself as a top-class coroner. And now look at her, head of the forensic investigation team, and a woman or less. Wow, you won't hear me complain, this is what we all dreamed of back then, I tell ya. Could you tell me without holding that gun in the air? We were all out to uphold justice, lad, for a vim, for a vim. That's coming across loud and clear. Hmm. Utter nonsense. Hold it! But we are only just starting to understand this case. Oh, is he gonna ignore me? Wh what are you reading there, sir? The man behind those murders on Solar Pond Street was caught in two days flat. That's real policing for you. That's uh, really not relevant, is it? You're wrong there. Because it was Dr. Scythe in charge of examining the bodies. And it was evidence arising from her work that led to the arrest to this of the scoundrel responsible. Oh. That's right. Oh, that woman is at the forefront of this country's fight against crime. He does have a point. The idea that she's somehow involved in this murky business is a load of old tosh. I thought it was up to me to press the jurors, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. 
The waxwork the man stole is nothing to do with the coroner, is it? But the coroner said it was the same, same person. It just can't be, right? You had your own problems? It is just a conjecture. Hold it! Why would you assume that? Oh well, quite simply because that unsettling swindler has no relationship with the woman, does he? True, as it stands we don't know of any connection. Oh gosh, but it would be delightfully romantic if they were somehow to have a mutual interest in the waxwork. Uh, romantic? Okay, whatever you say. A woman of society such as myself used everything in terms of relationships, you know? Okay, <laughs> well, you learn something new every day, and even if you don't want to. One might wonder about a possible relationship between the defendant and this coroner woman. Or perhaps between the defendant and the handsome prosecutor just there. Uh, you mean... You mean Van Barok... Uh, Van Zieks? Uh, this woman may be more astute than I've been giving her credit. What?! If that's the woman's stance... What?! Get rid of your yaoi fantasies, woman! Then perhaps demonstrating some connection between the waxwork and Dr. Scythe would be enough. Yes, I agree. As soon as we have even a whiff of a connection, she'll be the first to know. You do not trust them much. Hold it! What sort of problems? Let's just say we have run into each other on numerous occasions while I've been performing on the street. Right, I see. Obviously, artists such as myself cannot appear on stage as we walk in close proximity to our audiences, so we perform our great magic in parks on street corners and the like. But the police use any excuse to make our lives difficult. Uh-oh, someone's not happy about that. Holy crap, this is really dangerous! Playing with a gun like that, isn't it? Please tell me it's like secured or something. Excuse me! And do you have something to say in response to that, Mr. Ottermole? Wait, his name is Mr. Ottermole? Why are you calling me a marsh murderer? Uh, sorry, my mistake. <laughs> I got confused because I heard you look like him. I don't know. I just like to marry. Want to be locked up, Shoddy? Thanks, Mr. Sholmes. Perhaps we could move on? I was really wondering if you had something you wanted to add in response to what juror number three just said. And clearly you do. Back in my day, back in the good old days, it wasn't like this. <laughs> what was it like, sir? We worked our fingers to the bone to earn the public's trust, we did, and we're joking we on that. People respected us back then. Respected you, huh? No one would have called a coroner into question in them days. A coroner's report was the hallmark of an investigation done right, especially when Dr. Courtney Stevens put her name to it. Dr. Courtney Stevens? She was a bash of a bash and the apple of the. Uh, hold on a minute. What are you talking about? Who's Courtney Stevens? Oh, uh, so he got a bit carried away there. Eh? Stevens is Dr. Scythe's maiden name. Her maiden name, so that was before she was married. Of course, yeah, surely me. It's Scythe now, isn't it? So she's the, it's the, she's the coroner of. The professor. Huh. Oh yeah, I think when Japanese people marry or East Asians marry, they don't. Um, the 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 wife doesn't assume the last name of the husband. Stevens. I'm sure I've seen that name somewhere recently. Anyway, the point is, those were the great days of policing, not like now. Sorry to interrupt, sir. <laughs> but do you think you could change your statement to include that name? 
Well, yeah, I don't know why not. She was Courtney Stevens, a legendary coroner. Huh, legendary. Hold it! She was legendary, was she? What did you say? Uh huh. That woman was still the best coroner in the land, head of the forensic investigation team. Uh, legendary was your description, sir, not mine. Robert, that would never part my lips. I never describe anybody that way ever. I don't know if they were still in the game. <laughs> we have a court record here. You can check yourself. I think the point you're trying to make is that Dr. Scythe is an extremely talented coroner. Would that be fair? I'd would. If it weren't for the fact that you're trying to drag the legendary woman's reputation through the mud. <laughs> legendary. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that legendary. Okay. We're not finished yet with the pressing. You don't see any rigorous proof. That's true. Hold it! But you claimed the whole instantaneous kinesis demonstration was a trick. That I did, but there's more than one way to pull a rabbit out of a hat, is there? Sorry? I grant you, given that this cage appeared from admits of an explosion, there has been no need to use a real person. But if a waxwork had been used, the culprit could at least have had the decency to make it look like the victim. I'm not sure exactly how much criminals are governed by decency. The point is, if you're going to make a claim about that waxwork means at a birdcage, uh, you need to give us some evidence. Without that, it's just not science. I suppose we should expect nothing less than a logical argument from a fellow of the Royal Society. But that perhaps means his mind could be changed if we manage to present suitable evidence. Evidence that a Professor Waxwork was inside that birdcage. Can I produce that? Oh. I don't think I can. I didn't get any new evidence. I mean, where did we find this again? At Madame Tuspel's, right? That could be evidence. Dark staining. Shall we try that? Maybe we can try that. Actually, I have something I'd like you to see, sir. Oh? I must warn you that I firmly believe it's only wise to trust men in white coats. <laughs> don't do that. So given your jet black outfit, I don't mind admitting to a sense of trepidation here. So you don't trust anyone in black? And looking in the mirror must be very trying. <laughs> wow. I do have some evidence that proves the waxwork was inside that bird cage, namely... We did find that on the waxwork, right? Didn't we? I think? Take that! What's that? A piece of glass? That's... though it's unusually thick for glass. Yes, it's a piece of broken glass that we found inside the jacket on the waxwork. As you say, it's not ordinary glass, though. It's very thick and clearly made for extra strength. Much like the special glass that was developed for the construction of the Crystal Tower. The Crystal Tower... Holy smoke! Exactly. The centerpiece of the Great Exhibition, where the very incident we're talking about took place. On the day in question, the birdcage fell from above and smashed through a window of that special glass. From whence this small piece originated, is that it? Precisely. So, what do you say? Now that clear evidence in support of the assertion has been placed before you. Well, as I said, I only trust men in white coats as a rule. However, 
when the reasoning is sound, it's fair to say color shouldn't come into it. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Thank you for your scientific conduct. In light of what you've shown me here, yes, I feel obliged to change my position on the matter. In that case, you were number four. You will amend your statement now, please. Wait, what? The presence of that piece of glass leaves me a little doubt that the wax work was indeed inside that birdcage. But why are you not changing your verdict? What is happening? Uh, 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 wait, do we do we press on this? Why do we press on this? Okay, the wax work. Oh, <laughs> she was the last one. Oops. I know it seems a little far-fetched to think that the waxwork model of the professor was in that birdcage. But on the other hand, it explains a lot. There really is a reason why that particular waxwork had to be used. As Mr. Asman's double, we must do everything we can to make the jurors understand it. The truth is, I'm sure that's the key to this, but it's the most puzzling part of it, too. In that case, you should see what additional information you can glean, whilst trying to change the jurors' minds. If you can read a book whilst eating a rice cracker, Mr. Naruhudo, I'm sure you can do this. <laughs> what? Right. Yes! Hold on, I wanted to press the little girl. I've got to ask, uh, why have you brought that corn into court with you? Colonel... Colonel Cobb? He's been going back on the farm. Picked him off on my way into town. He's a proper nibbler, he is. Colonel Cobb? Yes, the nibbling seems to be taking quite a while. Maybe it could wait until after the trial? Uh, I don't like the sound of that. You need colonels at time like these. Whenever I've summoned big to the side, the colonel always point me in the right direction, see? You're talking about your, your cob of corn? A nibble noble guilty bobble, nibble not guilty out. Nibble noble guilty bobble, nibble not guilty out. What is she doing? Stop it! Stop! Nibble noble guilty bobble, nibble not guilty out. Perhaps it's akin to fortune telling with flower petals like people do back home? Oh no. So Professor Hairbrain's fate is to be decided by a crop of corn. Could you not at least wait until we've had more time to find the truth before deciding on a defendant's guilt? Oh, I don't know about that. Me time's awfully full already. Uh, amazing. Okay. <laughs> She's useless. She's useless. Who thought it would be a good idea to invite a little child as a juror? Mm -hmm. Legendary coroner. The waxwork this man stole has nothing to do with the coroner. Hold it! Can we? Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Sorry about that. Um, what does she need again? Like some kind of connection between the waxwork and the coroner? Connection between the waxwork and Dr. Scythe. Okay. We don't have that yet. Um, let's, uh, let's get back to the science dude and press on that. Hold it! Thank you for reconsidering your position, sir. Your words are misplaced, boy. My opinion is governed by logic and science and nothing else. Yeah, science is where you should direct your words of gratitude. Ah. Uh. What happened? What's the matter with you? Too good to say some words of thanks to the mother of all academic subjects. What is it about scientists, honestly? There was nothing! Without right evidences.
<clears throat> okay, the wax warp was indeed inside that bird cage. Ugh. I always forget that a little child is the last one. Ugh, my goodness. I'm so used to the jurors uh, talking from left to right. So this is really something. A legendary coroner. Utter nonsense that those two would be conniving with one another. So he's about all about Dr. Scythe and uh, um, what's his name, the engineer. Hmm. And she's about the corner and the waxwork. And he's just oh, you don't trust them much. So this is kind of useless, right? And you're like the waxwork was in the birdcage. Isn't this like some kind of connection between the waxwork and coroner, right? Isn't it? Objection! Those two statements are fundamentally at odds. Well, Mr. Foreman. <clears throat> There's to be a new Herlock Sholmes adventure published next month by the looks. My my lord, the foreman of the jury isn't listening. Is that so? Why should I have to reserve myself a copy? <laughs> that kid. Was that wrong? Mr. Sato, no one is listening to what I'm saying. Perhaps this would be a great opportunity to have a rethink then. Oh no! He listened and he's gonna... Oh no, he's gonna execute the punishment, okay. Fear not, my learned friend, I heard every sorry word. Uh, it sounds like I'm the, on the wrong track here, okay, fine. So this is not the connection? Is it really not the connection? My goodness. The key is... Hmm... There is a reason why that waxwork had to be used as the double. It had to be used as double. I'm not sure I understand that. Why did it have to be, have to be, the waxwork figure. Why does it have to be this waxwork? And what about this camera? I still don't know what the heck is wrong with this camera. Why does it have blood on it? And whose blood is it? So weird. Drab us contract. Well, that doesn't even help us. Post explosion. Hmm. A legendary coroner. Uh, what do you want? Hold it! Mm. 
So everyone believes she is very, she's a very upstanding person. The waxwork and the coroner. Huh? I, to be honest, I have no clue. You had your problems with members of the police. This is not about the police. It's about the coroner. Hold it! Okay, he had problems with the police when performing magic in parks. But the police use any excuse to make our lives difficult. Sometimes they even cook up a, st cook up a story to extort monies from the poor. Well, that's definitely not right. Yes, and it is why I say that if you trust the police, you will have trouble. But here you are, claiming this waxwork model was stolen to star in an illusionary spectacular. The idea is so wild, I think I will take my chances and believe the authorities on this occasion. This is how the public at large view Scotland Yard, is it? Our own police force in Tokyo is not even 20 years old yet, is it? Perhaps we should view what's happened here in London as a measure of what may happen at home. Yes, like a Scotland Yard stick. <laughs> I wonder how a policeman would feel listening to this way to the way this juror speaks about the force. I'm sure he'd have a word or two to say in response. He just said, "Oh, legendary, um, legendary! God damn it! Legendary Courtney Stevens is what he said." Am I supposed to pit him against the magician? Objection! Ah! Uh. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, this is bad. I have no idea. I have no idea. A legendary coroner. No one's saying she's not the best. The waxwork the man stole has nothing to do with the coroner, is it? Oh, that's wrong, maybe? Okay, the connection could be that, yeah, she is the coroner of the professor, and the waxwork is also the professor, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe that's it. Objection! Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Not really. A good wish is two statements you refer, Council. So, juror number two. Oh gosh, me? W what can I do for you? I presume that you heard what juror number six said in his statement. It's brought to light the maiden name of the coroner, Dr. Scythe, which in turn has revealed a connection that wasn't apparent before. Well, naturally, as a woman of society, I find such connections and relationships irresistible. But oh golly, I'm afraid I fail to see what you mean. Dr. Scythe's maiden name is Stevens. And through that name, the coroner is very definitely linked to the waxwork of the killer. The defense has evidence to prove it. Oh my goodness, evidence, you say? How, how utterly enthralling. Oh, so the court cannot overlook that last remark. I very much hope there is substance to your claim. Of course, my lord. I would ask the court to look at this. The evidence that clearly links Dr. Scythe to the mass murderer known as the Professor. Take that! I have here a certain autopsy report from 10 years ago. A 10 year old autopsy report? What relevance does it have? Does it say, does it say top secret on there? Who gave it to you? <laughs> 
It's a secret. It is, of course, from the autopsy of the person portrayed in the waxwork, the killer known as the Professor. <sighs> the Professor is, but the man was a capital offender, so... That's right, this is the certification of death that was drawn up after the convict's execution. The identity of the killer was never made public, so the report gives few details. But what's important is the name of the coroner who wrote it. Courtney Stevens. Oh my, Courtney Stevens? Schweigeloid! <laughs> it appears that the professor's autopsy was conducted by Dr. Scythe ten years ago. And a few days ago, Mr. Trevor very deliberately stole the waxwork of the professor from Madame Tuspel's. A waxwork that doesn't in fact resemble the victim, Mr. Asman, at all. And do you suppose there's some unsavory relationship between those events? Absolutely, I'm sure of it. There's no doubt in my mind that the Professor case is at the heart of a link that we have yet to uncover. Between Dr. Courtney Scythe and Mr. Enoch Drebber. Hidden links, mysterious connections, secret relationships, this is all most extraordinary. We're surely obliged now to explore this further. Quite right, we can't let this trial come to an end now. Not why there's this cloud of suspicion hanging over the yard's best corridor. It was like that in my day, but we're still here to uphold justice in the end. Very good. Two more. Two more. It's the professor. That's what links the frightful swindler and the coroner. Okay. What about you? I thought you changed your mind. What the heck? Waxwork was inside that birdcage. You don't have anything to say. Problems with the members of the police. Utter nonsense that to think those two would ever be conniving with one another. Maybe I need to p pit him against... Uh, problems with the police. Maybe. But first, uh, I wanna save. <laughs> Just in case. Okay, that was not it. <laughs> okay. Well. There goes my points. There goes my points. But but who else? If we are covered on the suspicion that we're not done here yet, are we clearly? Yeah. But we can't pit his statement anymore. Hmm. What about him? Didn't I already pit this one against the first person? Did we not? Objection. We did. We did! We did! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> let me load. Uh, let me load. Okay. Huh. We did. Did it look good? Accusing someone without right evidence. I don't get it. 
What do we do with him? I'm sure I need to pit put pit pit him against someone, right? Uh we can pit him against the little girl. <laughs> oh, what am I even doing? What? Are you serious? No, what? Are you serious, game? If you could put down your corn for a moment, Jura number five. Uh, are you mean me? You've pointed out that it's wrong to make an accusation without evidence, but the accusation that a waxwork model was inside the second birdcage on the day in question is not without supporting evidence, as the defense demonstrated to the juror sitting beside you. Oh, is that right? Would it be fair to say... You didn't follow the argument? I don't understand much besides Colonel Cobb, to be honest. Oh, of course you don't. If I could interject here... Please do, sir. Now that this assertion of yours is about a waxwork has been backed up by some solid evidence, it would be wrong of me as a man of science not to pursue the matter further. Thank you, okay. That was very random, I fear. Why, why pit, pit the little girl against him? Uh, where me too, then? Okay, sorry? If this brainy gentleman says he's right, then he must be. See, I, uh... I wouldn't dream of going against Colonel Cobb of anyone who's got stuff in between the ears. Okay. Success, uh, if you can call it that. Thank you, Counsel, that will do. As a result of the summation examination, the jury's overall leaning has changed yet again. Two jurors now called guilty four against four who call not guilty. According to court, accordingly, the court has failed to reach a consensus. And the trial must continue. We we did it somehow. Oh well done, Mr. Nanohodo. Another wonderful victory. Hmm, a waxwork of the despicable professor used as a body double for the victim in this quite extraordinary case. I must say, it's extremely hard to believe the assertion could possibly be true. However, it would appear that it does at least warrant further investigation. It's the waxwork of the professor that links Mr. Drabber and Dr. Scythe. And I'm convinced that there is a speci there's a special significance to that link. I don't know what you're hoping to prove, lad. I really don't. The truth, sir. By using evidence and testimony. Heh! <laughs> if the court is, del is to delve deeper into the alleged involvement of the waxwork in this case, then the prosecution calls for the owner of the model to be summoned as a witness. The owner? Madame Tuspels. I, I really thought that Lord Van Zeeks would object to this whole line of inquiry. Very well, I concur. Make arrangements for Madame Tuspels to appear as a witness with immediate effect. Listen carefully, my learned friend. Oh, yes? You should know that you're on the brink of opening Pandora's box. Huh? What, what's that supposed to mean? What? The court shall now adjourn for 45 minutes. During that time, the prosecution will summon the new witness and prepare her for taking the stand. Madame Tuspels, yes. I shall see to it at once, my lord.